Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 10 of my tutorial series for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. I'm Icon and today we're going to talk about conquering cities or city blocks. I'm going to talk about which kind of strategies you can utilize and what you should take care of and how to survive that whole ordeal. I originally wanted to do this episode base management but you see while I was trying around I didn't find any good spot to set up a base camp on. I found a couple of houses here, but just when I thought, yeah, just the house I was looking for, I discovered that uh, Wasp Queen, two blocks further, ruining my plans. So, this way is also no good. <laughs> There's a missile silo. There's a, oh, I should make a note here. Autonomous guns. So, these are, these are really deadly. They're uh, 50 caliber uh, guns that aim autonomously on you. These are just super deadly, but I mean, it's a missile silo, so it's legit that we have some AI, AI guardians there. So we're going to focus on this strip today and see what we can do. My first and foremost goal here is to secure myself a hideout. Sometimes you have no chance but to choose these. In this scenario, for example, I don't want to take a base camp here at these evac shelters because evac shelters don't have a, have a, a, an upper floor. I personally, for me personally, it's a must-have for my permanent hideout to have a upper floor because the monsters won't interact with the... the monsters from ground level stop interacting with your level of being, basically, while you're one floor ahead. So sleeping at night is almost safe. And that's only happening when you're one level above the ground. Okay, but enough of me rambling about all these things, let's get started. But I just wanted to make sure that we know why we're doing this. Because when you want to conquer a, a, a block of a town, make sure that you know what you're looking for. So, for example, in my scenario, it would have been really, really good to find some apartment tower or something like that. But we weren't that lucky. There's literally no sign of any of any higher story building here. There's also no no um, rural city blocks or anything, so we're bound to go in there. So the usual preparation rules apply. Bring antibiotics, antisept no, antiseptics, antibiotics is something wrong. Don't take me here. On that, antiseptics, hydrogen peroxide, alcohol wipes, whatever you need to keep your wounds clean, and bring bandages. Bring a good weapon and bring as much armor as possible. Also, it never hurts to come with a container that you can wear, but in this scenario, my dude is not carrying any containers. Make sure that your torso encumbrance is as low as possible. I mean, either you have as much encumbrance uh, as your armor does, or you should get rid of any uh, of any stuff because you know every single point of encumbrance here does really matter because the higher your encumbrance the more likely you are not to hit at all and the less likely you are to dodge attacks and it's just that easy okay so when you're entering a, a strip of a town make sure that you start somewhere where there's um, room to kite towards to and start somewhere where there's some terrain you want to fight at. So for example here, this forest here is wonderful. There's grassy patches here, there's underbrushes, there's lots of stuff where I can whack people at. So this is really good. If you don't, if you are starting at some place, some other place and you're not finding these features, feel free to try to to get another another angle on the town because seriously it's really important that you find an harmonious approach if you might want to say so like you really need to rely on those first steps so let's get rid of that a brainless zombie like i mentioned several times before i hate those guys because the moment you step towards them they grab you and then they they almost always get a free hit on you. You just have to bear with that. So I have a torso bleeding. Here's one nice trick. Press W, small W, and select your weapon currently weld. Then you're going to interact in this by stopping it, stopping to wield it. Now we're dropping that item. And now I'm pressing five on the num block. 
and you see I'm attempting to put pressure on the bleeding wound. This only happens when you're not wielding anything. So I'm doing this now until the bleeding has stopped. Press W again, pick up the baton of the, from the basement, and keep fighting. It's really, really important that you stop your bleedings like this, because, you know, every every bit of blood you lose does, does matter, you know. Okay, let's step carefully forward here. So I see a convergence of four zombie runners. This is a pretty problematic thing. The best occurrence that you can always see are normal zombies, or fat zombies, or, or crawling zombies, or decaying zombies. All these types have one thing in common. None of these are particularly uh, fast. The slower they are, the easier they are. The faster the zombies are, the more dangerous they are. Like, uh, this crawling zombie is super slow, it's practically immobile. Luring it on the tree trunk, which has a movement cost of 200, is basically making him completely incapable of dealing with me. Okay, now we're stepping carefully uh, ahead, and while you're conquering towns, it's really important that you only pull as few as you can. You see, now we got the acro of this dude here. And I want to show it you up close. Here you see the red exclamation mark is only active on this zombie runner. And these four here remain back there. If I would acro all four of these, I would most likely die. So it's really, really important that you take your steps very, very carefully. And then once you have the acro of one of the dudes, just wait a bit to let him get closer and then start kiting. You can also um, go over and... Wait a sec. Toggle movement mode here. Movement mode menu. The um, this type here. When you type that, you can change what kind of movement mode you want to use. Sometimes running is extremely, extremely valuable. So wait a second. I don't want to cycle. I think I'm leading you. What's that? can't remember how that uh, thing is called. So, movement mode menu. Yeah, I think that's just what we're here. That's the right one. Okay. I was a little bit insecure for a moment, but movement mode menu is what you want to have. Okay. So, I'm trying to lure that runner onto that shrub here, because underbrush is just genius. But runners, they tend to do this. As you see here, he's just sidestepping that brush because he's that fast. Sometimes you have to accept that 150 move cost terrain is the best you can get. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking one whack and I'm running onto the next tile, one whack, and you know, you can totally avoid getting wounded here, but since my character is fleet-footed, I can dodge these, but in general, there's one bad thing about, um, about runners like these, putting down the weapon again to stop the bleeding. There's one bad thing about these dudes in general. If you, a character, is not fleet-footed, all these kiting and uh, terrain manipulation tricks have their limits on fast enemies. It's just like that. We're going to do another neat thing that you can do. So we're going to, going to show it like the next couple of enemies. So here we're carefully extracting one one more of these dudes like i said only one step at a time only one step at a time so here i lost him now because i stepped away for too quickly and now we're carefully extracting that dude wonderful so this road is extremely dangerous and therefore i'm trying to change my tactics i don't like this they are zombie runners I see a feral human who seems to be wielding a fire, a fire axe. I see a zombie dog. That's only types of enemies that I actually don't want to see here. So what we're doing now is we're kiting that dude really far away from the town. Really, really, really far away because I plan to use my gun. So swapping the Beretta now, pressing small W to change the weapon, selecting it, you know the drill, pressing F to fire. So you see here, it's not swapping onto the target because it's not close enough. So I'm waiting now one turn, pressing F again. Okay, nothing happened, pressing F again. Okay. So, 
I'm using uh, the dart to steady my aim a bit and give him a little bit of a uh, leeway because the, the, the hit ratio on the precise aim is nowhere near satisfying. So we're going to use that a little bit further. And here we go. That's, that's good enough for me. So current aim, bam. And here, the next shot, I'll just go for the precise aim because that's good enough for me. One more bullet to go, but this dude is almost dead. You see here, there's almost nothing uh, left of him. So if, if that's the case, save yourself a bullet, get over to your melee weapon and wait until he dies from the bleeding. Or if you have to just take another whack. Seriously, every bullet matters. So I did this so far away from the town that if you wait a couple of turns, nobody comes. It's really important. I would have done that um, over at this place here between those houses. Practically every zit in the vicinity would have uh, came to check out what's happening. You can also use that to your own advantage because you can just lure the whole blob to one spot. But you should really leave after you fired your, uh, your bullets. So we're now going to get over here. So... This is also a nice uh, a nice environment. You see, there's rocks, grass. Rocks are really good. Rocks are good. 400 move cost, and they don't get destroyed by uh, by enemies. Unlike underbrushes and stuff like that, rocks are just uh, nothing you want to worry about. A sprocklodite. Okay. So this is a uh, type two mutation of the zombie kids but you know one problem with this game is there's a ton of different enemies and you really got to figure out what they're all about but the longer you play this game the better to get at it so here we're just doing as follows going over there and waiting when he's on that rock just start clobbering these uh, these boulders are possibly the best you can get in that environment. Keep in mind though that they're, this is only a small boulder. The medium boulders are better. They provide even more movement uh, penalty. But here is, here's a zombie dog incoming. Zombie dogs are just like uh, zombie runners. They're, they are that fast that they can juke you or they don't fall for these terrain tricks that often. I personally love to use this uh, large amounts of this uh, 150 terrain and just uh, don't stop ki in killing them there. This is because while they're standing in that grass, every action they take takes longer. So this is possibly the best shot you can get. While you're kiting them, they're most likely getting free hits on you. And, you know, that's just not what I want to have. Here, for example... This has 300 move cost. What I do now is I take three swings. Every action of mine takes roughly 240, uh, takes every action of mine takes roughly 80 actions. Like swing three times, three times 80, makes 240 actions used up. And this dude will need at least 300 uh, units to move on this tile, which means if I now step away, it's impossible for him to act. And if you follow this, just one whack, at the 150s, you know, I use 80 of these and the rest I take for running. It's highly unlikely that the zombies retaliate on you. It's a little bit uh, tedious to do so, but the, more, the less armor you got, the more important it grows to, to play like that. Because, you know, you can only afford to play extremely bold and ignorant towards the enemy's uh, capabilities if you are well armored. The tough zombies are just like that, so we're going to go like that. Put three swings and kite it back there. One, two, three. And there we go. So it's really important that you try to avoid as much damage as possible. So here my arm is pretty battered up. So I'm going to apply at least a makeshift bandage or, well, okay, it's already very poor bandage. There's no reason whatsoever not to keep your wounds uh, tended during uh, combat. Yes, the enemies will rip off your bandages every, uh, every now and then, 
but you know it doesn't really matter that much uh, like here I took already three swings but he's already on that uh, like his last pip is already uh, broken so there's a very high chance that they only take one or two more swings you can sometimes uh, vote for greed and just keep whacking but you know don't let me tell you I didn't warn you. So the Sproclodite, Sproclodite uh, didn't attack me until, it, uh, until I got very close and it's leaping. So if an enemy is new for you, study their behavior a bit. And if you notice that it seems to be impossible to lure them into your, uh, into your prepared terrain, do the best. Either decide to grab your gun and fire them down if you really think it's a super scary thing. Here, the Sproclodite. I personally didn't uh, know these yet. I saw it the first time. I just saw it is a variant of a zombie kid. So how dangerous can it be? So I t decided to take the fight out here. Always uh, try to make decisions and not just let the the battle uh, dictate your behavior. Basically, you know. But don't worry if this doesn't work out as you wanted to at the beginning. It takes a lot of practice to uh, to achieve the results that you want to have every time. But it seems as if we successfully cleared out a portion of this uh, street here. And compared to that area, the fights here were practically uh, harmless. I didn't get too many wounds in. There was one wound from that zombie dog. And there's uh, one more zombie runner down the road. But... Oh my god, guys, we're uh, we're blessed. So here's one thing that I want to show to you. Here's a, a two, um, a motorcycle. A motorcycle, every two-wheeled vehicle in this game is a, is a machine of death. Every single piece here has a movement cost of 400. You, this is the best you can get. Large boulders, medium boulders, I'm sorry. You can't hide uh, enemies on that. And due to this, the fact that you have a straight line to, to kite around, you can do so many shenanigans, basically, with a four-tile-wide motorcycle. Most of the time, you can even disarm fast enemies by luring them on, uh, on top of it. This happens easier because the larger the obstacle, the more likely the AI is to step onto the bad tile. I hope this does make sense somehow. Okay, so we're now capable of entering these two houses. There is really not much zombie pressure around, so we're going to step in and check out those houses. Usually, the doors are locked, and without a crowbar or something relatable, you're bound to smash those windows. Always smash twice, you don't want to step into those uh, shards. I already talked a bit about looting these towns, but, you know, whenever you can, just, uh, just pick up those antibiotics, alcohol wipes, aspirins ready-made bandages, whatever seems good, just grab it. Multivitamins also are very um, valuable to pick up, simply because you can use them to... You, you can eat one of them per day, and then your, uh, your character will be okay with eating all manner of other crap, basically. Okay, so we're now quickly browsing through that um, house here, Inside the bedrooms, in the early phase of the game, I always look to find a backpack or something, because we don't have anything yet. Here, adhesive bandages, alcohol wipes. I'm focusing on the on, on materials to, to tend my wounds first, because these are the most important. Also, lots of locked doors can be simply opened in while you're uh, trying to open them from the inside. But this house didn't have anything else except for medical supplies. It does not have an upper, upper floor or an ba a basement, so it's not interesting at all. So over here, I can already tell... Oh, there's a cordless drill. What a lucky find. Um, this is an unfinished building. Sometimes you find these. And, well, you gotta live with that. So there's a lot of dudes there. It's because there's a park. Parks are usually a sign of really bad news in townships because there's really very, very nasty enemies always spawning there, among them feral enemies. So sadly, this uh, this electric car does have 
everything except for electric uh, motors or stuff like that. Okay, so we've passed these two houses and now we're, we'll have to get a little bit further um, down, down the road. So I'm going to open the, the house here. Garages are always interesting spots to find uh, good equipment at. So here we're checking out the house, looking for staircases for, uh, first and foremost. So this looks like another house without basement or upper floor. That's good. Okay. So over there, that's an antique store. This could be a glorious uh, moment to find a uh, a good weapon there. Because antique stores sometimes feature, you know, not only drinking glasses, footballs or such, but also weapons. Well... Acetylene lamp, that's actually pretty, pretty nifty to have, but this this store didn't feature any weapons. Okay, we need to clear out more of that. So, I'm going to go towards a different area of the town that I already have cleared out, because I want to talk a little bit about um, houses and things to take care of there, because, you know, you've already seen all you need to know how to clear city sectors because the the me method I have introduced now you can rinse and repeat that you can use terrain like I showed you like I've shown you and if you get a hold on a two-wheeled um, cycle just use it abuse it, it it's really that good and uh, well I want to show you I want to show you for a moment what I'm talking about so I hope there's not too many Zs down down there so just to show you the power of these for a moment for real, just instead of just talking about it. So, as you can see here, every tile here is stupidly costly to move upon. So I lure the Z up here. One, two, three. Take a step back. Don't care that he stepped off. I just step across. One, two, three. And you can do that forever. Like, uh, normal, sm uh, s normal speed zombies are totally powerless against this method and you can fight off entire armies like that the only thing you gotta be careful about is if you lure too many enemies at once this can backfire because you know there's only so and so much enemy that you can whack but due to the fact that you can really dispatch your enemies like uh, and make them totally harmless At these locations, often your stamina is the real limit. Now, see, they don't even get to react. And it even gets funnier when you are able to have a, a real bike that you can move. Like, I think this one doesn't have... yeah. One sec. So, this one is out of gasoline, but you get the idea. If you get that thing mobile, you can even position it according to your needs, and that's where the true fun begins. Okay, so I think that sums up all I wanted to know, uh, say about these things. Let's start talking about houses, but I have to move myself somewhere else. I'll pause the video and take off on the house. Now, I moved myself over here but I had to move through the entire forest because it wasn't too dangerous to take the other detour. So these houses here, this area there, I, I have already cleared a lot there, but I wanted to talk about a couple of things. So here, for example, we have a basement here. And the first thing that you never ever should do is just press page down and go downstairs. You might die while you're doing so. So instead, Press capital X to use the peak menu and then press page down. As you can see there, you can see what's downstairs. If you, what did I say? I had my flashlight on the whole time. So without flashlight, it looks like that. With a, when you turn on your flashlight, pressing small a and selecting it there, pressing capital X again, page down, you can look at it like that. So I'm going to show you another house. I hope that gives you an impression why you should do that. So, oh yeah, I, I think that house over there. 
was totally living up to my exp uh, explanations. And there's a fat zombie here. So, here I'm using the terrain there. Like, blueberry bushes with 400 movement units. Sometimes you have to uh, manipulate them a little bit. So here's a scooter. Or, this is just the same thing. Electric scooter. Same method. So, this one is out of battery. Like, don't underestimate the value of two uh, two-wheeled uh, things there. It's, it's amazing. So here, we press capital X again. And here, this basement looks harmless. We activate our flashlight, press capital X again, and look here! Beautiful cockroaches and zombies and whatnot. So, never ever go down a basement without knowing it's there. This is a harmless basement. There are ones with tier 2 zombies and cockroaches that in instantly grab you off the staircase and you're, you're surrounded by enemies from turn 1. That's why capital X page down is your best friend. I have... I have lost several characters to grow <laughs> to grow that smart. So here we go. This basement is toxic. Here I would actually go for this house if there wouldn't be the wasp nest here to uh, this is just a no go. I'm not going to put up my base camp in in such a vicinity. I'd strongly recommend uh, you to not to do this either. But I want to finish here. The upstairs of these houses are extremely, extremely safe areas. Like, you can sleep at these. And even if there is something bad around the corner here, I will still use this house as a pre preliminary base camp. Like, for sleeping overnight and stuff like that. Because this is just the safest... This is as safe as it can get early on. You have to, to bite a bullet with the with your hideout, and when you're trying to sleep somewhere, try to take the room that has the most curtains, and um, close everything around you, especially when you're in a uh, in, when you're in an environment that you don't trust, because sometimes just overnight there can be something coming at you. But like in these houses, never something bad has happened to me yet. But I can think of a couple of things that might happen to me. That's why I say yet. So there's always the option, for example, that one of the wasps over here decides to climb up one level and take decides to take a stroll over the world. And basically, the game works like that. When you're on the ground level, only stuff on the ground level really moves and interacts with you. When you're one level abo uh, above, stuff that no, well, basically, it, let's take for example, you, you climb up a, a, a roof while being chased by a horde of zombies. You leave, ground level, go up one, Z level, and the zombies will know where you left the map and try to move accordingly. But they will really take a guess, and wh wh while you're taking steps on top of the roof, the zombies don't really can interact or can interact with you. From my experiences, they'll try to take the best guess, m meander around, and try to orient by the noises you make. But long story short here is, if nothing is on your trails, and while you're up here, you will not attract anything new, because the game is a little bit wacky like that. Correct me if I'm wrong about that, but these were my um, my impressions so far. And yeah, that's, that, that's how I clear out entire cities. There is one caveat, though. There are things in towns that are sometimes unclearable for you. Like, for example, that wasp nest. Or those autonomous guns up there. Oh, come on, let's have a look-see on them. So you know what I'm talking about. So, the thing about these is just, they are massive roadblocks. And I can't uh, recommend it enough to you to make sure that you mark these things on the map. And take care that you don't accidentally run into these again. It's totally okay to find things that you can't manage yet. Here, this is an uh, 
autonomous crows too. They come with an M249 ready to blast your limbs off. So, and that's actually what they do. So, if you just uh, watch it uh, go, it's just taking down all the enemies there. And uh, really be careful with uh, stepping closer to these. There is a light cone that wanders around the uh, the floor. If you really take a longer time to get closer to these things, you will realize that you can spot the light cone searching for enemies. If you ever want to get as close as possible, take good care of that. But I personally um, advise you to wait until you have a sniper, access to a sniper rifle and take them out from afar or anything like that or lure something even bigger and badder than that into that uh, rough direction and hope that it will take down these something on, uh, along these lines but you will never ever win the fight with these and that were, by, by just charging at it no chance and the same is true for the for this uh, wasp nest it's not impossible i guess with enough fire you should be able to kill that i never tried but there is this idea in my head and overall when you're trying to clear out a town you you're best off accepting that there are parts of a town that are most likely better left untouched and you, you shouldn't try too hard clearing them out because um, you can easily kill yourself by just being too hell-bent on clearing out a certain area there because you want to be done with that area. Uh, banish these thoughts. This can get you killed in no time. So in roguelikes it's more like you sh you you should learn to to find out which fights you can take and win and which one you can't. So here for example, whoa, I'm attracting an entire army here. But there's one good thing about this whole army thing here. There is a huge gun making lots of noise so if i just move away now the uh, zombies will most likely think that it's a good idea to step towards that gun so this leaves me to the last topic about this uh, video learn to use the environment to your own advantage like the more you learn to to use enemies and and send them on top of each other the better like, there's really no bigger gain than uh, letting two opposing parties either annihilate or decimate each other and uh, scrape off the rest of the enemies and uh, pick up the rewards after that. In this game, you're facing extremely unfavorable odds, and it's up to you to cheese and uh, manipulate the system as hard as possible to get the win. One last word of uh, advice here. You've seen those cockroaches in the basement, they get attracted by blood. The more blood somewhere is, the more likely it is to attract cockroaches out of these houses. They will even leave their basements to get there. So, when you abuse strategies like uh, the murder bike here, really, really hard, there will be ultimately a lot of gore around that, and this can attract lots of bugs around you. That's why I totally, totally recommend you to always have a gun. Because, you know, they are noisy, they attract a lot of enemies, but if you are at the end of a huge fight and you're battered, bruised, and just not capable of tanking more hits, it's okay if you've already done 80% of the enemy. Or, like I've uh, shown you back there, just kite the enemy really, really far away from the actual uh, gunfire um, from the actual gunfire to avoid other attraction or last method fire down the enemy that is opposing you and then take a run for it it might be that there will be a huge glob of enemies swarming to the place where you gunned down the enemy but if you're no longer there it doesn't kill you okay so this is how i conquer cities it's time consuming effort but it is worth it. You can gain so many resources out of that. And beyond that, I personally find it a lot of fun to clear out these uh, streets and uh, loot those houses because there's really, really a lot of good stuff. Yeah.
I think that sums it up. One last warning, take those basements serious because they are really, really dangerous and mark bigger threats on the map and avoid them as much as as much as necessary because you'll not gain anything for getting yourself murdered one thing there is also worth mentioning if you are far away enough from that wasp nest it will not grow or or breed or anything there's something called the reality bubble i don't know how far the reality bubble of a, of a player actually stretches i'll take a comment about that any time of the day but in short when something is too far away from you for example this nest here is for sure out of my reality bubble it's just frozen in time while you're moving across the map the game would uh, totally annihilate your pc if it would simulate that entire world every time you take a step no. you're just living under the illusion of an interactive world <laughs> <laughs> okay so dear friends that's that's that for this episode i hope you find that helpful and feel free to drop me any sort of comment i've asked some questions and whatnot so i'd love to hear from you leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed and of course consider subscribing there's daily content coming up from my side i'd love to have you so see you guys next time and happy zombie slaying